Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, here live at the Hannover Messe at the Intelligent Industry Stage. And now we are discussing a very important topic about autonomous driving. And um, maybe the visitors here have already seen our uh, a car demonstrator for autonomous driving here at the booth. Um, everybody in the live stream um, can follow now our discussion and I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Peter Steinert from Mercedes-Benz here at stage. He's the manager Big Data System Integration and Cross Functions and he will discuss with Ralf Blessmann from Capgemini, uh, Vice President Automotive. And they both will talk about the chances and challenges about um, ADAS systems today. And the stage is yours. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Steyer to be here at our Capgemini stand in Hannover and we are going to talk about autonomous driving uh, for Mercedes-Benz and also the contribution of Capgemini in this context and first of all I like to know why is autonomous driving important? Okay, we have a small problem with the technic, maybe you can switch, ah okay, no it's, uh, yeah. it's just slow, my fault. Okay. You <laughs> so why is autonomous driving important? Actually, I would uh, answer with a question. Why should I drive myself? That's, that's m maybe the most important question because, of course, it makes fun to travel with your um, convertible on the country roads on a lazy Sunday afternoon, but most times you're just going from A to B. And what you want to do is to travel safe and comfortable from A to B. And uh, from my perspective, there's no reason why I should do this myself. So I would like to hand over to the car. And uh, I think um, this uh, notion of traveling comfortable and safe, this is delivered very, very good by autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. If it comes to comfort, autonomous driving will give you back um, valuable time. So you're not lo no, no longer um, need to be concerned about the traffic around, about all the other traffic participants um, that you see. You're not uh, concerned about the car you, you need to ride. Um, you just get back this time and you can spend it valuable, for example, to talk to your family, to work in the car or to get in-car in entertainment. Um, I think this is about comfort, giving back time. The second aspect is safety. Um, we see this already with the current generation of uh, assistance systems that uh, they really deliver safety to the driver or to the passenger of the car. And this will increase with autonomous driving because those cars will reduce the impact of uh, the human factor by close to 100%. So the autonomous car will never be angry, it will never be tired, it will never be fallen in love, it will just do its job and bring you from A to B. And I think this is uh, what makes it important. We also expect that uh, tra travel congestion will be reduced because uh, if you have a big fleet of autonomous cars, they will be run much more smoother than, than the human-driven cars. And this will also lead to a better utilization of the uh, traffic infrastructure we have. The topic autonomous driving is quite known for a couple of years, but what has really changed or was the development in the last five years? Well, I've, I would look back five years, I would say, um, there was a lot of uh, discussions with the head in the clouds about a robot taxi being on the road and, and mass transportation uh, today. Um, I think this has not happened. But we see a big progress in, in, in all the other fields. We see uh, level two systems nearly in any mid-class car today. Um, we see the level three drive pilot on the road um, from Mercedes-Benz. It uh, has been launched uh, two weeks ago, I think. Um, we see a lot of uh, prototypes running in the US. So, so I think um, it has become more tangible. It's now it's there. It's not a dream anymore. It's not a vision. It has become more and more tangible and you can really use it. That, that I think is the change we have seen in the last five years. Coming from a vision to something you can really buy. Yeah, excellent. What are also in your role the specific challenges concerning autonomous driving looking at, for instance, data and IT? Well, let me first start with uh, the ADAS system itself. So, um, if you want to go from level two to level three, on the first glance, this seems just to be one step to go. But if you go, go into the details, you'll see that you have to push everything one step further. You have to have better sensor performance. You need to have better, uh, better algorithms. You need a completely new validation strategy. Um, you need more, uh, much more redundancy, redundancy in the car so that you can cope with failure situations better and well. 
So it's a completely new approach to the other system itself. And you have to um, support that with the right processes, tools, and methods to do that. So it's what you did for level two systems will only partially work for developing a level three system, especially if it comes to data. And then with uh, any new technology, also new legal issues come, out, come up. So now in between, we have a legal framework, but uh, this legal framework has to be transferred into technology. It has to be transferred into software solutions. And we have to interpret what does it mean and what do I have to do to uh, comply, uh, comply to, the, to the regulations. This is also a big new challenge you have to cope with if you go to, from level two to level three. Um, uh, and then um, finally, if it comes to, to our project, um, there's been a big change in, in the role of the car. So if you have uh, today um, the, the, the driver with his eyes on the road, now he can take his eyes off. But if the driver is allowed to take his eyes off, the system has to take over. So the car has to be eyes on. And this means in the case of an autonomous car that you have a big sensor set in the car producing uh, terabytes of data per hour. And um, this has led to a paradigm shift. So uh, the car, which has been uh, the most important test platform in the past, has now become a big data source. Um, and every, uh, every part of the development process, development, testing, validation, everything depends on the data you get out of the car. So uh, what we see here is our data life cycle uh, as it flows from, uh, from the car back to the car, which means we need to support some global development. Um, uh, we have test locations at any, on any um, place in the world where we want to run an ADA system, so we have to go with them to collect the data. We need to provision the data end-to-end -to, -end to the data customers. We need to support analytics to see whether or not we have some critical situations in, uh, in the data stream we got or something unforeseen that we need to handle. AI training is very important to be supported, and it's, AI really depends and relies on having very, very good uh, digital data of the real world. And last but not least, you have the simulation and validation. And our challenge was to provide a data platform as an IT organization together with Capgemini, was to provide a data platform that enables to close this cycle and to make it as fast as possible. Um, this means that we had to build a global infrastructure for data worldwide and in any international location where we run test cars or want to provide, a, want to provide the other system in future, including a mobile infrastructure that can follow test teams from place to place if they move on. For example, looking for some traffic jam in, in Berlin to test the system in the Berlin uh, environment. We also need to provide the data end-to-end, -end, so um, we need to connect uh, the car to the infrastructure so that it can upload the data very fast and efficiently. And while the data flows into the infrastructure, it is um, processed and uh, prepared to be given to the subs uh, subsequent uh, downstream processes where the developers work with the data. Um, if it comes to analytics, um, the data is automatically analyzed on its way to the pipeline so that we can detect events that, are, that need special care or attention for our developers, like special weather conditions, unforeseen situations on the road that we have never had before, or some data mismatches. For example, we correlate um, always the data we get from the sensor set with our HD map to see if we see the world um, in reality as we have it on the map. And if there's something, a mismatch or something like that, we give this uh, data together with the um, uh, information we derived from it to the developer so that he can uh, handle this problem. If, if it comes to AI development, um, we need to support two scenarios. First, of course, AI is usually today means AI to, usually today means uh, neural networks. So the car's perception is mainly based on neural networks. And to train these neural networks, you need to feed a lot of real-world data, tagged real-world data to the neural networks so that you can learn how, how the world outside looks in the digital, uh, in the digital world. Um, and we also use the data we get to um, see how accurate the object recognition of the AI is compared to what we see in the real world. This is also a very important use case. Last, not but least, last but not least um, you will never be able to test all those kilometers uh, on the road. It will be a, a mass of cars riding for years 
just to, to run all scenarios and to get all scenarios you need to test. This is why uh, digital validation with simulation is so important. And we run a cloud-based infrastructure that, which allows us to run millions of uh, test scenarios or test scenario variants to identify um, fields of improvement where we need to improve the system or also to check um, special situations uh, and, and see how good the system performs in, in unforeseen situations. Dr. Steuert, what have you achieved from Mercedes-Benz and what is special about Mercedes-Benz? Well, sometimes it's, it's quite difficult to say what is special about something you are part of. <laughs> but, but, we come, but we come, we come, maybe an outside interview would be very interesting for that, but um, we come to this later. Well, um, in our case, everything started some years ago when we brought together people working with data in the field of autonomous driving um, and just, just to align the demand of storage we will need in the next years. So, quite simple question. And, and what was planned for as a two-hour meeting become a one-day workshop. Because for the first time, those people came to work together and really talked about data, not their day-to-day -day job. They talked about data. And in the end of this workshop, we had a kind of landscape showing the 25 to 30 use case, cases we need to support with a data platform. And what we also learned on this day was um, that it's not important to build the largest storage available in Europe or in the world, but to uh, develop data pipelines that ensure a seamless data flow from the data source, from the car, to, also, to all the data customs, customers that need to work with the data. And that we really need to close this loop because this loop means um, this, uh, determines the speed of development. Um, the faster you can go, can go through this loop, the faster your system will get major. And uh, speed is a key in, in, in such an innovative topic. So at the end of, the, of this workshop, we had a good vision, a plan how to do it. This has become our North Star. And with this North Star, we could also go to the management and uh, allocate resources, um, convince people to support the vision. And uh, in the end, we were able to build based on this vision um, the, our today's data platform that in the end supported the development of the uh, level 3 system, the drive pilot we have uh, launched uh, two weeks ago. And I think this is maybe the biggest achievement we did to, to bring the people together and build this platform with them um, and to support the uh, development of the other system. The second question was what about is special? Well, um, I think we had it before um, the special thing about this project was that um, obstacles were not obstacles, it were, it were challenges. I never have worked with a team that really liked challenges so much as this team. So everybody was highly dedicated, highly dedicated to build a real Mercedes-Benz level 3 adder system. And whatever came up, it was solved. And I think uh, this was very, very special about uh, uh, this work. Mm -hmm. And I'm, of course, interested what was and is the role of us, Capgemini, for this success? Well, um, if you start an expedition into, and, and you want to discover an undiscovered country, then you, of course, look first for specialists, so people that, that fit into your team and will be able to solve everything you expect on your journey to the undiscovered country. Um, but this is only one part. You would also look for a team that is able to cope with the unexpected, that it finds new and innovative solutions for uh, problems you never have seen before. Because if you go on such an expedition, you don't know what will happen uh, in one year or two years. And I think this was true about, uh, very much true about Capgemini. Um, we, we found a partner with a big skill set, so being able to build on-prem on infrastructure to connect to the cars, as well as um, the data management infrastructure that is able to cope with really big amounts of data, as well as uh, enable us to scale up in the cloud. So from the technology perspective, a broad skill set. But it's also true for the mindset, because here we have a bipolar situation. On the one hand, we search for people that are innovative, that are agile, that push the topics forward. But we also need to build a reliable service for all the data customers. And this bipolar thing is really difficult to build it in a team. And this is something Capgemini did really excellent to provide us people that brought us forward with new ideas, and at the same time, being able to support us with a very reliable service and data provisioning. Thank you. And finally, I'd like to know what are the next steps in this exciting topic and what do you expect from us? 
Well, um, on the first glance, you may think it's going level one, then level two, then level three, then level four, then level five. I do not expect it going like that. What I expect is that we will see brokers on all levels, because today you have an, any mid-class car, you have the sensor set for a le good level two system. So I, I expect that we will see a lot of brokers there with respect to new functionality, new features. Still having the driver as a safety fallback. We'll see level three systems come up and become more and more available, more and more reliable. We'll see new use cases for level four, like um, shuttle transportation at airports, or if it comes to commercial cars, um, transporting goods from a logistic hub number A to a logistic hub number B, uh, closely located to, to German autobahns or highways. And if it comes to level four, I think, uh, level five, I think maybe somebody will come up with the famous robo-taxi use case. Um, so I think there will be progress in any, any of these directions. If it comes to our project, um, I think we will see two things happen. One is we delivered now the drive pilot, but um, you, you know there's a saying in Germany from football that after the match is in front of the next match. And the same is, same is true here. So after delivering drive pilot, of course, we are heading for new, new features, new functionality, which means while we did work on building a reliable data provisioning process in the past three to six months, we will now start to speed up the cycle again because we need to support development to uh, add new functionality. So speeding up the cycle will become our task for the next months, I think. And in the midterm, um, well, this vision of a data platform for the ADA system has been uh, our North Star for, I think, four or five years now. So it's, I think it's time uh, to rethink if there is a new North Star, a uh, new vision to build. And Capgemini is highly invited to support us with ideas with, in, in this process. Thank you very much, Dr. Steyert, and we are looking, of course, also very much forward for the next steps together with you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs>